Good afternoon. Hello and welcome to a further webinar with the topic ABB Room Touch and ABB Trevion. My name is Thorsten Reibel from the Building Academy Smart Buildings, and together with me is Jürgen, Jürgen Schilder, and we both share this webinar. Yeah, this webinar is planned for around 60 minutes. So, what is the topic for today? I start with the ABB Room Touch 4 inch and the ABB Trevion Display 2.4 inch. We can handle it together. It's almost the same, of course, some hardware uh, differences, but the software, function, the software, the functionality is uh, almost the same. And Jürgen will continue then with the ABB, ABB Trevion keypad. So let's start with these both devices. But we, <coughs> before we come to the details of these products, let's talk about the general way of operation and interaction in a smart room together with KNX. And it's very colorful, different options you have, starting from the conventional push button, connected via an uh, interface to KNX, typically our universal interface. Of course, there are a lot of KNX operating control elements with different designs from different manufacturers. We have touch panels, about this we are talking today, of course. Um, apps on a smartphone is existing. On a PC, uh, you can have a visualization. And last but not least, voice control is also possible. Mostly used is the KNX operating or control element, uh, and there are some limits. Number of operations, yeah, you can have up to 10, 12 functions sometimes in one component, then it's a pretty big one with a lot of buttons. Showing status, yeah, you can do it with LED, but values or text information is, is impossible normally, not available. The description of the buttons or functions is sometimes not existing or it's unclear due to any uh, icons only. And it's fixed, of course. In most of the cases, you cannot change it anymore. And also the button assignment is fixed in such a KNX push button and the overall design as well. And exactly here, the, the touch panels, the room touch panels come into the play. And with our Trivion and room touch 4 inch, we can solve these issues. You see already some pictures of these components on the left and the middle. And operations are for typical room functions, of course. It's not a touch panel for the whole building, though, of course, you can interact also with other functions in the building. But typically for the local lighting control, shutter, room temperature control, for activating scenes and more. Yeah, operation, touch panel, what does it mean? Like on your smartphone, you can swipe through the different pages, you can activate uh, something, you can uh, change the value, for example, by, by sliding on this touch screen, all these things are possible. You can show real information by text or values. Of course, high quality uh, display is standard nowadays, uh, especially the Room Touch 4 inch has a very good resolution. And in terms of installation, it fits into standard uh, wall boxes where you normally install your push button. So it's the same way of installation. Commissioning, we come to this done, of course, via the ETS. If we talk about the KNX version, uh, via the so-called DCA, the device configuration app in the ETS. And yeah, the Room Touch 4 is available in black and white. We see later the ABB Trivion display is only in black available. Here are some impressions of these components with some yeah, already pages. We talk first of all about the ABB Room Touch 4 inch. You see here some lighting control, also colored lighting is possible. We see it later. This is more or less only possible on the touch pedal if you would like to select, for example, a dedicated color. Blind control up and down, but also, of course, positioning is possible, stopping is possible, um, and room temperature control. So all these devices have an integrated temperature sensor, and all room temperature functions can be visualized here and also operated as well. I mentioned already these status information values. Pretty good possible with both devices. You see an example with some values. You can scroll through the different values and have a look and also status information like a window is possible. Very useful function, even in a room only. Some impressions of the ABB Trivium display, 2.4 inch. Um, yeah, you see a combination also with a socket, for example, is possible. But you see already different real frames. So this is a component to be completed by a frame, like normal switches uh, or whatever. 
And uh, also here we come to different variants. And I think especially with this combination of socket and uh, yeah, this touch panel, it's quite interesting. I got a lot of good feedback when we have shown this on our Light and Building Fair in March. Yeah, these product variants for the AB Trivium display 2.4 inch uh, is the following that we have different, of course, designs available for all our wiring accessories. Um, so different frames. And what does it mean? We have also different components in terms of size. So this black area you see here consists of the display, the touch display, of course, but also it consists of a black additional frame. It's hardly visible here. And you can see here from the left to right, it's getting bigger. It means the size of this complete device is different. 55 millimeters, 63 and 70 millimeters. And here you find also the um, yeah, associated designs you can add to these components. So it's different here. And for all these designs mentioned here, we have the right version of a Trivion display. And also later, of course, of the ABB Trivion keypad. Jürgen will show this later as well. So this size, 55, 63 and 70 is related to the width and height of this black area consisting of the frame and uh, the real touch panel. Yeah, um, so this black frame or black glass frame is not touchable uh, thanks to the fact that we have only a black background here available. It looks like a consistent surface, so in, only in the inner part you find here a, a real touch panel. But from uh, the, visi sorry, the visibility is here in principle yeah, quite smooth and quite consistent and makes sense to have here only a black background. So, yeah, we have not only these two new touch panels, room touch panels, ABB Trivion display and also the room touch 4. Remember, we have also these ABB room touch 5 inch. So it's a rectangular size and a bit bigger, of course, and our ABB smart touch 10 inch. So the design is very consistent. It speaks the same design language, but not only design and hardware is pretty similar, but also the software, the commissioning. And the way of operation, it's it's very similar. So if somebody knows one of these products, it's not completely new to go to another product here. So let's come to the main technical data. Again, what I'm take, uh, telling you right now, it's valid for both devices, for the Room Touch 4 inch and the Travion display. Of course, hard different in hard hardware, like the size of the display, 2.4 inch and 4, uh, and 4 inch itself, different resolution, 2, 2, 240 by 240 or 480 by 480 pixel. That's different, of course. But we need an external power supply, 24 volts. Typically, you use, of course, a yellow and white wire of the KNX bus cable. And you see here on the rear side, um, the connection terminal for the bus. And here, four connection terminals, one pair is for these 24 volts, the other one is for an input, I come to this. We have an SD card slot for firmware update, optional import of the configuration from ETS to the device, so instead of downloading via ETS, you can use also this SD card, and for the screensaver, any images on this SD card can be used as well. Integrated temperature sensor, so for complete room temperature control, the devices are uh, possible to be used. And uh, of course, then you need also the internal room temperature measurement. Though our input, I mentioned already, can be used as a binary input for any contact, but also for an additional temperature measurement in the room if you want. Yeah, and very important, it's a KNX device and also an ABB free tone device. I come to this later. Um, so it's the same product, no changes. And of course, you can switch in the component between KNX and free at home operation. It's a monoblock device, means integrated bus coupler. It's a glass surface we have discussed already. Um, the frame is available in black for both devices and the room touch 4 inch, also in white. You see it here on the right side. So both the frame, but also later in the parameters, you can adjust the background to white as well. That's not possible for the ABB Trivion display. 
Yeah, integrated proximity sensor means you, if you approach the device, you can highlight uh, the display again, so light it up again, and then also a telegram can be sent. Integrated brightness sensor for adapting the brightness of the display depending on outside brightness. Haptic feedback means if you touch the screen, you can have a kind of vibration plus a small sound to get informed that you have done uh, or you have carried out a function. Yeah, it's for global use in VDE and British standard markets and depending on the market, both in ABB and also Bushdrager brand available. Yeah, regarding installation, it's quite easy. As mentioned, you can install it in a standard flush mounting box you have for any other conventional wiring accessories. The only thing you need is this frame here, the metal frame. It's part of the delivery of the device. You mount it here uh, with screws on this flush mounted box. And then you snap only the complete device in this frame. And then in principle, it's, it's mounted. Of course, you need also wiring the connection, but um, that is fixed. And the only thing you have to take care of uh, the direction of this um, frame. Top is written here on this device, on this frame as well as on the device itself to have it in the right position. If you want, you can add some anti-theft protection via these clamps. You might know it already from ABB 10 ton range or also from the room touch for five inch. And then only with this additional tool, plastic tool, like a fork, you can remove the device again from this flush mounting box. So pretty simple, like other components you install in such a uh, wall box. Yeah, hardware, we have discussed a bit. Uh, let's come to KNX programming. Also here, we have the same features for both devices. So the same way of programming the same number of functions and so on. Practically, we have up to 12 pages possible, and each page can have up to four functions, one, two, or four functions. 13 different control elements are available, from switching up to, to audio control. I give you a short overview later. And in addition to these 12 pages, we have one page for up to 12 status or error or any message informations. Um, as already shown in one of my slides, uh, it's a very useful function to get some additional information either from the room or maybe also from external. Proxi proximity sensor I have mentioned, uh, and in addition we have this primary function, very simple. If somebody approaches device is not aware of the functionality of this device, he has to press only with three fingers on the touch panel, and then one related function, typically the light maybe in the room will be turned on. So easy then to do at least uh, the standard function. And very important, and remember our webinar we have done around one month ago about KX Data Secure. Of course, these devices are also capable for the secure standard on twisted pair KX Data Secure. I mentioned already this information page. These messages can be on different levels, information, error, and alarm can be highlighted as well with colors and so on. We have logic functions integrated. We have timers integrate, integrated, like you know from other touch panels. Very easy to, to adjust by the end user. Scenes can be administrated and sent from this device. And as mentioned, 13 different control elements. Switching, dimming, color control, value slider, blind, everything around HVAC control, fan switch, temperature control, split unit, and VRV control, and scenes plus audio control is possible. How to parameterize, how to configure, how to download this device, of course, via the ETS. It's both for ETS 5 and 6, and you need these typical yeah, additional files, the so-called device configura uh, configuration app, available for these devices free of charge, on the homepage of the KNX organization in the, in the shop, the KNX shop, also uh, on our um, yeah, homepage, it's a product. You find these DCAs. You have to import it into the ETS and then you can parameterize everything because it's not in the normal parameter window, but in this DCA window, which appears then like this here in, within the ETS. Now there are different DCAs available for both of these devices. It's sometimes a bit confusing. In the next slide, I show you for all our four touch panels, 
the related DCAs. It's, yeah, 2.4 inch has a separate one. Room touch 4 and 5 inch have the same one. So you need only one DCA, but again, for the smart touch, a further one. So three DCAs you have to import. You find it then in the overview of your ETS apps. And you might know that sometimes an update appear here and this you have to check. You see this check button here and then it shows you when any update is available and you can install it. Let's have a look into the DCA. This is the window you will see at the beginning. So on top you have some superior functions like importing data or exporting, preview, I come to this. Here we have, first of all, on the left side, applications, it has to do with system settings, adjustment of this information page. We can uh, administrate the inputs, like uh, scene uh, actuator, logic functions, and RTC, also room temperature controller. And we can add any, any function also to a favorite control, let me say, uh, yeah, uh, list to take it again in other pages without programming it again. So if you select something on the left, you find here the parameters on the right, here for system settings, and you find also all communication objects, and you see also all group addresses from your ETS project here. So any group address already created will be visible here. You can add also here within the DCA some group addresses. And last but not least, you can via drag and drop assign the group addresses to the objects here. So you don't have to go out of this DCA, back to the normal ETS environment. You can do everything here without any problem. So this was the application part. Navigation, the second one here on the left, is more or less creating pages and adding any functions to the pages. So you create up to 12 pages from home page to page 11. And then you can take here from the, the top, from all these 13 elements, something and place it here within the page. You see here four different functions uh, within one page, one, two or four functions are possible. And then if you have selected one of these elements, of course, you find again the dedicated parameters here. You find the related group objects here, or communication objects, and all your group addresses, which can be then assigned as mentioned via drag and drop. Yeah, let's go. To the next slide, um, start a bit with the superior functions on top. Not all I would like to show to you. By the way, the presentation you get today already, the PDF, contains some more slides than I can show here right now. So it's a real complete, let me say, collection of every function within the devices uh, in our presentation. Preview is very important. What you have done, you would like to see without download. Then you click here on Preview. You see every page with the functions already visible directly in the ETS. To get an overview of what you have done right now, you can change it. And of course, the same will be then available later after download. Then we have this visible button here. It's very simple. In the parameters, you find sometimes some, some hints, some information in addition to the parameter itself. Uh, and if you don't want to see it all the time, you can make it here invisible, for example. Coming closer to the programming part, as mentioned, under navigation, you find the pages. And if you add a page, you will be asked what shall be the structure of the page, one fold, two fold horizontal structure of the button or vertical or four fold. Um, yeah, this you can do. Um, so of course, you take then here the elements in, in this page and then you have what you want on each page. You see here, home page one, two, three, four, and so on to uh, up to 11. You can change the order here by going with this up and down uh, arrow. And then you can see, or the user can see later at the beginning, maybe not page number one or the home page, but any other page is also possible. Clicking here on the pages itself, then you get an overview here of all pages and you can scroll down and see in principle all structures of each page here directly in one view. Quickly coming to system settings, no details today. There are a lot of standard parameters you can adjust, uh, starting from the display. Remember color theme, dark is possible for both devices. There's also an option for white if you have the room touch four inch. Yeah, and further adjustment like time and, and the proximity sensor and what shall happen in case of screensaver functions and so on. 
Keep in mind, many, not all of these functions can be changed also later by the user via the system setting page, which is of course also available in the display. If you want, you can block it via a pin code, but practically also the user has some options to, to adapt something here. The information page, as mentioned, very useful to show some, some values, some data, up to 12 information, not only simple information, but also warning error with, with highlighted color and so on, and, and, and message box comes up immediately if something appears, can be parametrized here. So any values can be shown, any status. Um, yeah, um, and of course we can also say what is the most important function. I would put it then here in notification number one. This I would like to see always at the beginning, whatever it is, and you adjust here everything, of course, in the parameters. Yeah, under inputs, application inputs, as mentioned, um, we can adjust here the hardware input we have in the device, both for binary input, but also for temperature control or temperature measurement, first of all. Um, application, for example, window contact in the room can be directly connected at this device. Any conventional push button you might add uh, to your installation can be linked here and can be programmed for any function or for temperature measurements, think about floor heating. Sometimes you need to measure the temperature in the, in the ground, in the floor, or you would like to have a second temperature sensor for room temperature control for weighted measurement, also feasible with this additional input if you want. Another nice feature we have, have here within the DCA to search for group addresses. You might have a lot of group addresses and uh, functions behind, and you don't know exactly at which page, at which functions you might have used it already, and you would like to identify this. So you click with the right mouse, right mouse button on the group address, and then it shows you the page where it's uh, um, yeah, in use. If you click on the page, you get the page with the operating element where it's used, and then clicking on this, you see also the function behind. This is very easy possible and quite useful if you work with a lot of group addresses and objects here. And also in this list view of the group address, you can search and uh, type in here any group address you have used but don't know where it's used and for which function, then it will be shown here as well, highlighted with yellow. And you can proceed with your further work. Yeah, about the KNX control element, uh, everything is in the presentation. I'll show you only three or four right now. The principle is always the same. First of all, if you have created your page, this drag and drop, you pull here one of these elements directly on your page. Here it's a fourfold page, let's say, and for example, the switch will be then placed here. And of course, on the right, you find the dedicated parameters you can adjust. And uh, below this, you all get also these group addresses or First of all, not group addresses, but first of all, the communication objects to assign them later the group addresses. And this is more or less the same for all these elements, of course, with different um, yeah, parameters. Here again for the switch. I don't want to go in details right now, but let's have a look to the RGB white control. If you place this element here, of course, you can adjust again something. We have different communication objects then available, also the six byte object now for RGB white control. And the user interface shown here consists very often not only on one page, let's say, where you can turn something on and off. No, you can also go to further sub pages by clicking on these three dots on the upper right side. In this case, it shows you this color circle to select any color you would like to have with your RGB white control, with DALI, for example. And this is only possible with a touch panel, of course, and here easily possible. So for scene, not visible here, but you can also uh, click here on this um, uh, on this uh, surface, and then of course you can select also the screen number because up to 64 screen numbers might exist, and um, then you can use this one byte scene activate any scene. But also storing, of course, is possible with long operation. It's written store scene by long press. It's activated here, then also possible. RTC control, yeah, like a normal room temperature controller adjustments, you know already. And again, here, a powerful user interface with the first overview of your functionality with um, set point or the um, room temperature 
plus again three buttons here to go to the sub pages for changing the set point or changing the fan speed and whatever. Audio control, yeah, nice. Think about any audio functions you would like to have controlled via this touch panel. Um, of course, it's only control here. You need a dedicated hardware behind this device. For example, you take our Bush Control Touch, which has connection to Sonos available. And then instead via the app of the Bush Control Touch, you take here the typical icons to, to start uh, the music, to change the channel or whatever. That's possible. There are also KNX audio actuators on the market. But for operation, perfectly also possible together with these touch panels here. Coming to some general operation information. Yeah, it's a touch panel. You know, every day by our smartphone. What does it mean? If you have a page with a simple on off functions, you click with your finger here on this surface, and then of course it will be turned on and off. Different status will be shown with this icon, for example. If you have any, any changeable values like a dimmer, like a shutter moving up and down the blinds, you can also tap on the surface and keep it tapped or keep it pressed and then you slide up and down and you change the value itself. And as mentioned, some of these pages have also the three dots to come to a sub page for further functions. Yeah, we have a lot of pages. Remember up to 12 operating pages and on the bottom you find some small icons representing not only these 12 pages, this house icon represents the home page and then up to 11 further pages. You can click directly here on these dots, but if you say it's too small, you can also move from left to right and then you jump from one page to the other. And further pages here on the left, a gear, a time function or time symbol and information button, I come to this as well. Also possible directly by clicking here on these icons. So on one of these uh, icons, the gear is the system setting part. As mentioned, you can change as a user also some general settings. And um, coming to this, you find here in total nine different further functions. Um, just a, sh a short summary. Display means uh, you can adjust the brightness, sensitivity of the proximity sensor, for example, uh, haptic feedback. Do you want to have a vibration if you touch the panel? And some more things. Theme has to do with the background. Remember, most devices can have black background. The Room Touch 4, also a white one, but not the ABB Trivium 2.4 inch display, only black. Adjustment of date and time. User setting has to do with languages, up to 19, 19 different languages we have here in this component. Screen, a screen saver has to do with, uh, yeah, you would like to have a slideshow from USD card as a screen saver or clock shall be shown, time shall be shown, for example, can adjust the pin code for assessing the system settings at all. Which is activating of the KNX programming mode or to reboot the device or even reset as possible to factory settings. Firmware update also via the SD card possible and about some information about the device itself. Also the KNX individual address will be shown here, but there is some more feature behind, you should know. And about you find also two codes, the QR code. If you have a look to this, this is important for the KNX data secure capability. Remember, we need the so-called FDSK key from a device. And this is then here accessible via QR code reader and can be then easily entered into the ETS. This FDS, FDS, FDSK code is also there's a label on the device, but if you lose it, you get it also here under about in the display itself. And the DMC is a code for um, yeah, product page you can assess with our AB product scanner app. So if you would like to have more information also this way easily available. Yeah, and here again, this information page, you find it here under this icon EI for information. Yeah, summer, let's summarize all these pages. You find they are down there as mentioned and can select directly or slide from left to right and you get everything available. It's everything available finally for the end user. The system settings, if you want, you can block it via pin code and then it's not accessible. It's also possible. 
So finally, I come to ADB free at home. Remember the devices I was speaking about is both available for KNX and free at home. It's not another hardware. It's the same component. How to change between free at home and KNX? Pretty simple. We have a display. We can assess this display and can switch something or change something. So if you energize the device the first time, it's KNX first of all. And for the next 30 minutes after you have turned on this device, you can go again to system settings. And after about a further part is available called reset system selection. And then you can choose only between KNX and free at home. In both directions, you change to free at home. And after 30 minutes, it disappears. So nobody will see it later in the normal operation. Of course, if you would like to assess it again, then you reboot the device and then it will be visible again for 30 minutes to change the mode. Yeah, and I've only one slide for you in terms of commissioning with this free at home because it's so easy. If you are familiar with free at home, you assess via the system assess point, you have free at home installation. Uh, you create your layout of the rooms and add all the devices because devices are automatically detected. So connected devices, even this display will be detected automatically. And then you just go under panels here. Via drag and drop, you place your panel in your room. And then the next component or next screen will be shown which display. I have only here the display 2.4 inch. This is a Trivium display. I save it. And then it's in part of my installation in free at home, and then I can configure it. And configuration is pretty simple. You place only the functions you have created already, lighting control, blind, whatever, on one page. You see up to four elements also per page are possible. In total, we have four pages only, not 12 as with the KNX version, but for each page up to four functions means four by four, 16 functions in total are possible more than for KNX. Instead of 12, you have now 16. So very simple, works well, and then you can integrate also in free at home this component. So finally, some commercial aspects very fast. Um, in principle, you see here the overview of the room touch 4 inch, available in black and white, remember, and these anti theft protection accessories. The same for the Trivion display. It's uh, the 55, 63, and 70 millimeter version, but only in black. And again, here's this anti theft protection tool. Of course, as we need a frame to complete this device, don't forget to order also the related frames you would like to have. I would stop with my part right now. I hand over now to Jürgen. Jürgen will continue now with the AV Trivion display. Not display, keep it, of course. <laughs> Hello and welcome. Jürgen Schilder is speaking. Today I would like to introduce you the new ABB Travion Keypad KNX. For example, how flexible the device can be used as a one fold up to four fold touch sensor and what features does come with this device. Thanks to the new touch concept based on capacitive surface, the ABB Travion offers a completely new way of operation like we know it from our display, like the Travion or the Room Touch or the Smart Touch display. We have here also this swiping or slider functionality. I show this in different animations with the corresponding ETS parameter settings. But let me start now with an overview of the history of our control elements. So let's start from left to right. You see here our first KNX operating elements, control elements, the Alphanea, which were launched in the year 95, followed by the Bush Triton, the first generation of Solos in the year 2002, followed by the Bush Brion, the second generation of Solo 2010, ABP Tacteo, our glass sensor in the year 2018, Tenton 2020, and last year we launched a new range of ABP Trivion keypad and display. So the ABB Trivion keypad is a new control element which is compatible with ABB Free at Home, ABB Flextronic and ABB iBus KNX. And today I would like to put a focus on ABB 
IBUS K Nix. It's a modern and flat design with very flexible and functionality inside. Later you will see in the ETS how it easy it is to configure it in an easy kind of way for different applications. And we have a new and modern, opera modern operating concept based on a capacitive surface with LED light guides. Like here on the left side of this control element, you can see there is a so-called uh, running lights, which can visualize, visualize, for example, the movement of a blinds or the brightness of the values. So not only status, we have here also a kind of animation. And the ABB Dravion fits in a wide range of our design ranges, like, for example, in Solo, Bush Linear, Bush Art Linear, Stainless Steel, Dynasty, and so on. The complete KNX Dravion keypad exists of three components. At first, we need a design cover, the keypad, and our KNX bus couple unit. With this device, you can control the different functions in a room, like lighting control, blind and shutter, heating and air condition, because the device has an internal temperature sensor, and of course, call or, steam or store the scenes. So we have a new usability concept. So there are no mechanical push buttons inside. We have a capacitive surface. So you can operate this device like a slider, for example, or element in a panel. Parallel, you can use it also as a standard functionality with the typical touch function, yeah, on, off, up, down, long and short. But you will see later, it is really nice to use here these wiping functions for dimming and blind control. And we are really flexible in the application. We can use horizontal or vertical rockers. The AVB Room Touch 4-inch, Trivion Display and Keypad are so-called KNX data secure devices. It means the device follows the KNX secure protocol on twisted pair and can listen or send both secure and plain group addresses. So not a complete communication must be secure. Each single group object can be plain or secure. And to a secure group object, the device can only listen to secure, you can use only secure group addresses and some of the objects can be used plain with standard group addresses. And all secure devices comes with these stickers, the so-called device certificate. In the device certificate, we have two kinds of information. One is the serial number, and the other one is the so-called FTSK, Factory Default Setup Key, which is needed for the first commissioning. Further information about secure, KNX Net IP Secure or Data Secure, can be found on the website of the KNX Association, or you can find also a webinar, the recording of our webinar and the presentation, which we have given some weeks ago. So the ABP Driven keypad can be configured flexibly as a one-fold touch sensor. You see it like here, a typical one-fold with button or rocker up and down, for example, a two-fold, three-fold, like we see here. We use here this rocker gang for uh, the rocker gang vertical, you can use it also horizontal, and two additional buttons for two independent functions. Of course, you can use it also as a four-fold touch sensor. Then you have here up to four different operating areas. It's a name that you will see in the ATS. These are called operating areas for up to four different functions. And it comes with our animated light guide. So here on the left and the right side, we have LEDs, not only red, green, blue, white, you have up to four user-defined RGB colors. So in the ATS, you can use here purple. You can uh, you can configure it as purple, yeah, or, or light green, or what you want, and can use this color concept here for status or also for the animation. That's what I show you later yeah, when we control here shutters or when we dim dark and bright them. Additionally, we have an orientation light inside, which can be switched on or off via one bit information. We have a day and night mode for changing the brightness of the LEDs. And we have an optical and acoustical alarm function. There's a butter inside, which makes a noise when you send the one bit information to trigger here an alarm. We have a primary function. The primary function um, is only carried out when the entire surface, like here, is touched 
with the hand or at least three fingers. So you come in the room and with your complete hand you touch here the surface and can trigger a so-called primary function maybe to switch on the main lights. And what is also new, we can block individual operating elements. So we are one bit information, you can block exactly this button here so no one can call a scene. But the other operating areas are here still active. Then we have the acoustic feedback with different levels of noise. So when you touch here one button, you get back then the feedback. And the internal temperature sensor, which can send then the temperature to a separate fan coil controller or valve drive controller, for example. And like always, the control elements, we have these additional functions for logical gates, sequencers, minimum and maximum converter, and all these things are, of course, inside. Then let's come to these parts we need for our complete Ravian keypad KNX. At first we need here our KNX bus couple unit. Then we need the design frame, depending on your range what you use, for 50, with 55 millimeters, for Bush Art Balance SI, 63, Bush uh, Future Linear, Solo, or the 70. As an option, you can use here the removal protection, and then we have here our keypad keypad in different sizes depending on our design range and here then the, the design cover. So we need minimum these four components, bus couple unit, frame, keypad and design cover. Some words about these design covers. So we have in our product range overview the design covers in different colors, in different design ranges without icons. Like here, this is for example um, a two gang rocker with vertical or here this is a four gang button or here we have a two gang button with a one rocker with a wrong one gang rocker sorry <laughs> with verti uh, vertical so these are all without icons so then in our product range overview you can find a wide range of design covers with icons like here on the left side for the light on and off or dim dark and brighter for the shutter for call the scenes to control here audio elements these are also available with wide range of these icons and the third possibilities to do it customize in our portal the same like we do in our configurator for the ABP Tacteo so online you can configure it and generate a design ND and then order it so this configurator will be started or available soon so then let's come to these ranges. So you see here a kind of overview of our design ranges. On the left side, we have our 55 millimeter Bush Balance SI. You see here then the size is 55 millimeters, 63 millimeters, or the new the range we have here, the Bush Art Linear with 70 millimeters. So then let's come to the parameters we have in the ETS. You can really flexibly parameterize this keypad. So at first you can use it as a one gang button or one gang rocker horizontal or vertical also possible. These are the pictures we will see later in the ETS. So you said, okay, here left and right, or you use it as a button. Second possibility is you use it as a two gang button or a two gang rocker vertical or horizontal also possible. And also here a three gang button. So with three independent buttons or a two gang button and a one gang rocker horizontal like here or vertical like for example here for shutter up and down or like the darker brighter and the last possibility is to use it as a four gang button then you have four different buttons here we have a so-called oper before different operating areas are the names here of these fields yeah, for uh, switching calling a scene and a lot of more functionality so then let's jump in the ETS and when you open the parameter in the ETS, we don't need here DCA. Everything is done here in the standard parameter settings in the ETS. On the first page here, on the first menu, we have the configuration. And here you can specify what you want. Would you like to have a layout number nine? Number nine is, for example, here with up to four gang buttons. Then you have here four so-called operating areas, which can be used for switching the light or for example calling a scene or send a value what you want. Here on the right side you can see all possible layouts. What would you like to have here for example depending on a one gang button with horizontal or vertical or three gang. So this is what you can select here. This is in the field 
configuration. And then depending on your layout, you get then here the operating areas one, two, three, four, or so on. And the next menu we have the device settings. In the device settings, you can enable the group object in operation, so the device can cyclically uh, telegram to monitor it with another, another hardware. And also here new our LED settings. So we have of course colors blue, green, red, white, as, as in, uh, like we have it in our other sensors, control elements. But here you can specify four user colors. So you click here, and then a window pops up. And with the sliders, or we are we are clicking here, you can select the RGB color or HSV, what you prefer. And for the status or for this light animation, you can use then one of these four colors, like purple, for example. The enable day and night mode can be done here, so you can activate it, and then you get the group object to link a group address. The same for the orientation light, the alarm function and the acoustic feedback. You can hear say quiet, standard or loud. And we have a touch, so we can also set here the touch sensitivity of our capacitive surface. So these are here the settings in the menu device settings. Then let's come to a standard switch sensor. Like for example here, we use the layout number nine and then we get here four of these operating areas, one, two, three and four. So we get here our the configuration for operating area one. We can say, what would you like to do? We can use it for a switch sensor, blind shutter, switch dim, we can call a scene, we can use sequences. We can also send here values or use it for multiple operation. Additionally, it makes sense here in the field description to enter a useful text like liked on the ceiling yeah, or the liked on the wall socket outlet because this text here is copy and paste on the left side to the operating area. Like here, operating area one, you have the text liked in the ceiling. Additionally, you will, can, you will find this, the text also here in our group objects. Like here, this is my operating area one, switch liked in the ceiling, and the same here then for our LEDs. So then let's come here to our button switch. We use exactly here this operating area number one to switch I liked on and off. We can use here also the distinguishing between short and long toggle or only on and off when we touch the device or when you release it. We can block it via this parameter. So we are a group object sent to the blocking um, blocking group object of this operating area one. You can deactivate this operating area during the day or during the night. It's also possible. So then we do the animation here with our standard button switch. So we press here, then the device sends a one bit information to the switch actuator, the switch actuator switches on and send back, send back a separate group address with the status. And you can use then here this LED for the status elimination. This is like a standard sensor. You know it from other products ranges. And the same for switching the light off when you press here short. The device sends a one bit information with this value zero, switches off the light, the actuator sends back the status, and the LED goes here off or in another color. We are flexible, not only on, off, uh, red, green, you can use also blue, or one of these four user defined colors, also possible. So then we come to the next button, which is a so called switch dim two button. This is the same, like you know from other control elements, between short and long short on off and long we can dim dark and bright but it's what is now new we can use these leds here also for the status illumination like on off and we can use it for a bar graph like for example here our dim actuator we have a brightness value of 15 percent he sent the 50 percent to the status input and then this led shows here about 15 percent so we can see here the bar graph the brightness value of the dim actuator. And when we dim darker or brighter, we get here a kind of animation which dims darker or brighter of all these LEDs. So how to use it? We go back to our configuration. We use here, for example, layout number three. So we need here, to, we use here two buttons, the switching dim two buttons. One is here for on, dimming brighter, and the other one, for example, for, uh, for darker and switch off. So then we jump here in our operating area 1.3. On short operation, we switch on and off. And for long, we dim darker and brighter. If you want to use this LED animation, which is new here, then we can activate it. And here you can select the color of the animation. So 
So this is when you press the button, you dim darker and brighter. During this dimming process, there starts a kind of animation of these LEDs. In the color, what do you prefer? Yellow, red, green, purple, uh, and so on. So then let's do it. So let's start here. We have a status of about, let me say, 20% here in our dim actuator. And the bar graph shows here 20%. I press now here long. And during I press, this LED here shows me the dimming process. So you see the dimming process finished, 75%. And then I see here the 75% position here of my bar graph. So the bar graph shows me here then the value of my dim actuator. And the same when I dim darker, like for example here with the other button, we have here our animation, which becomes darker. And when we stop the dimming, we get here our new status of 50%. So this bar graph can be used to show the brightness value of our dim actuator. So then let's come to this new feature in our AVP Draven keypad KNX. Here we can use a function which is a so-called slider. You know, we have a capacitive surface and then we can, we can operate a device similar like our smart touch or our room touch. This is the new concept. So then when you use it, we can use a so-called fast swiping. This is when you come in the room and you swipe up and down very fast, the device send a value zero or 100%. This means to switch on or off the light. And when you swiping slow, up and down, he sent the brightness value depending where you have your finger, 50%, 80%, 72%, and so on. And additionally, you can activate a short tap. Short tap means it's similar like the fast wiping. You, you touch it and then switch on or off the lights. And the LEDs can also be used to visualize the dimming of the lights and shows via the bar graph the status. Like here, you can see with your finger, yeah, you go up and down, you swipe up and down, and when he reached the brightness value, like here 80%, the bar graph shows you this 80%. How to use it in the ATS? You go here to the layout. We need again here a layout with, for example, two operating areas, like one and three. Then we select here switch dim slider. You see, you have here more. We have the switch dimming buttons. We have shutter and so on. Please select switch dim slider. And then we have here in our operating area one and three, our sliding function. At first you can enable or disable the short push. This is the tab for on off and the, or the fast light. I recommend to use only one, the short push or the fast light. With the fast light, you can send the dimming value zero or 100%. It's similar like the short push on and off. And for the slowest light, he sent brightness values between zero and 100%. Additionally, you can also enable here the LED animation. So now when you move your finger, the color of the LED also change here in a kind of animation with the foreground, yellow or other colors, the four user defined colors and also the background if you want. So here's an example of the slider, switching dim slider. Here we have 50% brightness value in dim actuator. Then you can use here the LEDs to show you, to show here the status like 15%. So now, with the first fast slide up, you can switch on to 100%. You come in the room, take your finger and make a fast slide up. Then he send the brightness 100%. Dim actuator goes to 100 and send you then back to status. And you see here full LEDs are on, depending on the color you want, like here orange. Then you see the status here 100%. Or vice versa, you make a fast slide down, zack, very fast. And then during this Fast slide down, you get also the animation, which is a very short time. I'm not sure if you can see it here via the Teams meeting, but at the end, the dim actuator goes to zero and you see the LEDs are here off or change to another color, like for example, you want. So when we want to send a value, brightness value between zero or 100%, then we make a slow slide down. So at the moment we have here 100%. You see here the bar graph shows 100%. And then we make here a slow slide down with the finger. We stop here at 30% and then he send the value 30%. Dim actuator goes to 30, send back to status. And after this animation, you can see here 30% brightness value. And the same when we make a slow slide up, we come here with our finger, we press and we make here a swipe up to, let me for example, 80%. Then he send the brightness value to the dim actuator. Dim actuator responds with a status and shows us here our 
dimming value. So this is the function so-called switch dim slider. So then I would like to show you also how to operate a blind and shutter. Like a standard control element, we can use the two button function, which is short for stop and the lamella and for long operation for blind up and down. It's the same principle like in a standard control element. But what is new, we can use also the LED for kind of animation. So when he drives up and down, this, this LED shows you moving shutter up and down or the blinds. And we can use it also to show the status of the height. Like here at the moment, I have here a height of my, of my uh, blinds of 20%. And then you see here about 20%. Similar like before in the dimmer, but here also for shorter. So we go now to our first page, Configuration ATS. We select here Blind Shutter, two button. So and then we get here the parameters for this typical long and short, short stop and change the angle of the lamella, and long for up and down depending on your parameter settings. If you want, you can enable here this LED animation, and then the LED shows here, or kind of yeah, running the running LEDs, it's a kind of visualize then the movement here of your blinds or shutters in the color you want. So let's do it now live. Here we have our two button functions. It's in the position here of 20%. You see here the height. And now when I press long, so with the finger, he send the command. And then you can see here these running LEDs, which shows you uh -huh, the shutters or blinds driving down. When they reach the end position, the actuator sends back the status. And you see here 100%, the blinds are completely in the position down. New, also here the slider functions for shutter. Similar like before for the dimmer, you have a fast swiping. Fast means you come in the room, you would like to drive the shutter appliance in the upper or lower end position. This is what you can do with a fast swiping. Then he goes to zero or 100%. We can have a slow swiping to uh, send the telegram between zero and 100% to move it to a target position. And a short tap can be used to stop or to change the angle of the slats or lamella. And as an option, we have here our running LEDs to show here the movement or to show them the status. Yeah, like here, the finger, you move it down, release it. It is like you can, you know it from our smart touch or the room touch to drive it here to a position. So then let's go to the ATS parameters, blind shutter, slider. Remember here for slider, you have to activate this button. And then we get here operating area, one, three. Again, here with a short push. Short push means you can stop or change the angle. Then he send the, this information. Fast slide means when you come in the room to drive completely up and down and the slow slide. So slow slide, move to a position of the height. And if you want this LED animation with this running LEDs, then you can activate it and select or set here then the color you want. So then let's do an animation with this blind shutter slider. This LED here shows now the height, the height of my of my blinds, like for example here 20%. And when I make a fast slide, fast slide down, then he moved to the lower end position. So you come in the room, make a fast slide, and then you can see here the running LEDs during moving of this of the blinds. And when the blinds reach the end position, the actuator sends back a status 100%, and then you can see here the height, like here 100%. And the same for fast slide up. You make here a fast slide in the, in the direction up with your finger, and he send the value 0%. He drives up, and you see here this LED animation during moving of your blinds, the color you want. And when you reach the end position, like here 0%, uh, the LED of the bar graph here is 0. If you want to move to a position, then you have to make a slow slide, like for example down. So with your finger, really slow, like here in this position, and after, the, uh, after he reached the end position, like here 80%, he show it here. Good, so far, not all of this, uh, of this operating areas, but only to show you some features here of this new slider function for dimming and for controlling shutter. Some words uh, again about this new uh, RGB LED concept we have here. We have no fixed colors for our LEDs, red, green, blue, white, and so on. We have four user-defined colors, which you can set in the ATS. We can use the LEDs for status. 
yeah, like here on off, but also here these running LEDs can visualize the movement of the blinds or also the brightness values during dimming. Additionally, we have here our new dual white for orientation and red, for example, when we activate this alarm function. How to set it? Go to the ETS. We have here then our separate LED function here. We are in the operating area 1.3. Then we get here the LEDs. You can choose the status illumination or the function illumination. But I want to use this bar graph to show me, for example, exactly the position of the height or the dimming value. Then we select status, one byte, and show the status value as the bar graph. And the bar graph, I see exactly between 0 and 100%, the brightness, the position, and the color. You can use here the standard colors, red, green, blue, white, and one or sorry or one of these four user defined colors and the direction of the bar graph normal or inverted it depends how your actuator sends back then the status so then let's come here to our led animation this is during the dimming process or when the when the shutter blinds driving up and down then you can enable this animation and set also here then the color for this animation Good, so my last slide, you can see here overview of the group objects on the left side. The primary function is now activated to call a scene. The operating area one is used for switching dim slider, two and four for shutter, temperature sensor is now activated. And then on the right side, you have then here all these group objects where you can link the group addresses like in operation, the alarm, then the buzzer goes on and makes uh, acoustic alarm and all LEDs are now red. We have the day-night mode for the orientation light. Here for scene, this is my primary function. Remember, you come in the room and you touch the entire surface with your hand or three fingers. Then he calls the scene. And then we have the group objects here for the operating area one and three. This is our switch dim slider to switch on and off to send then the brightness value or to block. Remember, we can block each single operating area via one bit information and here with the next one is for our two and four is the operating area for our shut and blinds for stop the status for the hike and so on plus at the end you see here the temperature which can be used to send the value to a separate room temperature controller or to our fan coil controller or valve drive controller good so far my presentation about this abb room touch uh, sorry about the abb travian keypad and I would like now hand over to Thorsten. Thank you, Jürgen. Yeah, interesting, real new product in terms of operation. <laughs> I remember when I had the first contact with this device, I was a bit struggling with the way of operation, but finally I got it. And yeah, it's, it's nice uh, with these running LEDs, colored LEDs and so on. It's not a real touch panel like LCD, of course, but it's a good mixture, especially for, for private buildings. Allow me to come to my final slides as always. You find everything about these products we have discussed today in our homepage. Everything is there for both devices or for all devices we have discussed right now. In our training qualification database, for those who don't know it, you find everything. Also, this webinar will be stored there both as a presentation but also the video recording in the next days. Yeah, what do, else do we have here in Heidelberg? We have these certified trainings, just in information. We have these certified advanced course in July, a tutor course in October, the further basic course in November. Um, we have already a lot of bookings, but still space available. So if somebody of you or your customers is interested, please contact Jürgen or me. And there's an addition other application training after this uh, certified advanced and basic course also possible to join if you want. Come back to us if you need some seats here. And we would like to continue with the topic preview on keypad. Uh, I think it's worth to go a bit in more details of the parameters, how to commission it. And this question from Christian could be also an interesting topic. Uh, so we create, uh, as we have done already in the past, an online learning session where we show everything practically. This video camera you see really is a component, how it works. And it's planned for the 5th of June. We invite you on time. We say thank you for your participation. Hope to see you next time. See you. Bye-bye. Ciao.